from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of VMworld 2020, brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of VMworld 2020. Uh, of course, it's a, such a broad ecosystem in the VMware environment. Been talking a lot, of course, this year uh, about what's happening in the cloud native space. vSphere 7 uh, ha has Kubernetes coming into uh, the virtualized environment. And one of those key uh, pieces of doing cloud is need to make sure data protection still works. And of course, uh, VMware has a long history working with lots of companies. In this segment, we're going to be digging into the VMware and Dell uh, so solutions for data protection. So happy to welcome the program. First, I have from VMware, Tom Spoonwar, he's a product line manager for modern application platform with VMware. And welcome back to the program, one of our CUBE alumni, Efri Natal Shai, uh, who is with Dell Technologies, Director of Data Protection and Cloud Native Apps. Efri, welcome back. Tom, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Our so, 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 Tom, I kind of teed it up in my intro. Uh, you know, VMware for the longest time, you know, for as long as I can remember, we've really talked about that ecosystem, those joint solutions. Remember back when we started the Cube in, in 2010, uh, you'd go there and it would be, oh, there's you know, 15, no, $20 for every dollar that you spend on VMware that the mm -hmm. ecosystem kind of pulls along. Uh, when VMware started building the, the VMware Cloud Foundation and the VMware Cloud Solutions, data protection really went along with it. So the integrations that they'd done with vSphere pulled them in their environments. Uh, Tanzu, Kubernetes, there's a lot of new pieces, but I, I think some, some of those uh, principles have stayed the same. So what, why don't you start us off, tell us a little bit, you know, philosophically, how's VMware treating this space uh, and how, how data protection fills into it and then Efri will get you, your take on it too. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, so, um, you know, from the perspective of of uh, VMware and the ecosystem, as you say, you know, we want to be very inclusive. We want to bring the ecosystem and our partners along with uh, what we're doing, uh, uh, regardless of what space it is. And in the modern applications platform uh, and cloud native uh, tooling, you know, we're very much uh, thinking along the same lines. Uh, and as it relates to data protection in specific, uh, you know, cloud native is a place where uh, mainly it's been thought of as uh, a place for stateless applications. But what we're seeing in the in the in, uh, in people's deployments is more and more stateful applications are, are beginning to move to Kubernetes and into containers. And so the question then becomes, you know, what do you do for data protection of those applications that are deployed into uh, Kubernetes? And so, uh, with Tanzu and spe specifically Tanzu Mission Control, we have included a data protection capability uh, along with the other capabilities that, that come uh, with uh, Mission Control that allows you to provide data protection for your fleet of Kubernetes clusters, you know, regardless of which, um, uh, which distribution, regardless of which cloud they're running on, and regardless of, of you know, how many teams you might have running on a particular cluster or set of clusters. And so uh, for this reason, you know, we have introduced a data protection capability uh, that is uh, focused uh, around our um, open source project called Valero. Uh, and Mission Control operates Valero in your clusters uh, from a central kind of UI API. Uh, and CLI uh, that allows you to do data protection, uh, initiating you know schedules of backups, uh, doing restores, and even migration from cloud to cloud uh, from uh, from a single control point. And you know part of this vision is you know not only providing uh, an API that we can handle directly with our own uh, with our own Valero based implementation, but also opening that up to partners. And uh, and this is where we're working with Dell specifically to be able to uh, provide that single API, uh, but yet have uh, Dell, for instance, with their Power Protect solution, be able to plug in and uh, and and be a data protection provider underneath Tanzu Mission Control. And so that's the uh, work that we're doing together uh, to help satisfy this uh, vision that we have for data protection in the cloud native space. Yeah, um, agree 100% with Tom. Um, like Thomas said, when we looked at uh, customer environments three years ago, people talked mainly about stateless applications. 
But over time, when more storage solutions, persistent data solutions came along, there came the need to not only provision the data, but also protect it and be able to do backups and restores and cyber recovery solutions and disaster recovery. And the whole uh, set of use cases that allow a full life cycle of data along the, the cloud native uh, set of applications, not just a traditional one. And what we've seen, we're talking obviously with a lot of uh, customers, uh, joint customers with uh, VMware, customers that use our storage solutions as well as others on-prem and in the cloud. And what they have shown to say that is that you have the IT infrastructure people on one hand, uh, which have certain needs, and there is the new set of users, the DevOps people who are writing applications in a new way, and they need to communicate and they need a solution that fits both of them. So with VMware, with the community, with Valero, we are introducing a solution that is capable of doing both management for the DevOps people as well as for the RT infrastructure. And a year ago, we have talked about uh, this coming up, and now it's it's really there uh, and it's doing great. Well, Efri, I'm, I'm so glad you brought up uh, some of those organizational issues because it, it's not just, oh, we have some new applications and of course we, we, we need to do data protection. Uh, can you bring us inside a little bit? You know, your, your customers, uh, you know, are they aware of, you know, what they need to do? Is it, you know, central IT that's coming over and, you know, telling the DevOps team, hey, uh, you know, don't forget, you know, security, data protection, still super important. You know, how, how does that uh, in, engagement go? And, you know, what, what changes does that have for uh, the, the Dell field and the channel? Yeah, I think that the more successful organizations really have that kind of dialogue. So, the developers are not op operating in silos. They are not doing uh, things themselves. They do some of uh, the use cases. They do um, need to copy data for their own use, but they understand that there are also organizational needs. Someone needs to sign that you know the audit passed, um, that the SLAs are in compliance, the regulations are met. So all of these things, someone needs to do them. And there is a mutual recognition that there is a role for these people and for, for these people, for these use cases. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, you know, one of the things that, that we're seeing, you know, particularly as you think about Kubernetes as a, as a multi-tenant kind of uh, platform, what we're seeing is that uh, central IT operations uh, still wants to make sure that uh, backups are happening with stateful uh, applications, but more and more they're relying on and, and, and providing self-service capabilities to uh, line of business and, and DevOps to be able to back up their cap or their uh, applications in the way that's best for those applications. Uh, it's a domain expert. It's a recognition of domain expertise for a particular uh, application. So what we've done with Mission Control is allowed Central IT uh, to define policy, and uh, those policies then give the framework or uh, or guidelines, if you will that then allow the uh, DevOps teams to um, make the best choices uh, within uh, their own uh, field of expertise and for their own applications. Yeah. And, and what we've seen is uh, s some of the organizations really like full control over central IT and give, some, some customers have told us, uh, don't give anything to, to the developers, but most of them are asking for some self-service capabilities for the developers. But then who is setting the, the policy? Who is saying, okay, I have a gold policy uh, data protection. Does it mean I replicate to another side? Does it mean I do long-term retention for a month or for a year? That is for someone in central IT to set up. So saying what the policy means or what it actually is, is the job of a central IT, whereas setting, you know, this application needs application consistency and it is of gold policy, that oftentimes is the best knowledge and domain expertise of the developer. So Tom, you, you mentioned Tanzu Mission Control, which is the, the, the management solution. Uh, Tanzu is a portfolio. Can you help walk us through kind of the, the, the relevant pieces here uh, that, that, that are part of this, uh, this joint solution? Yeah, sure. So Tanzu uh, is really a portfolio of applications or a portfolio of solutions, as, as you've said. Uh, it's really along three main pillars. Uh, it's what we call build, run, and manage. Uh, 
Um, Tanzu Mission Control fills in uh, along with uh, our Tanzu Observability and Tanzu Service Mesh in our manage kind of pillar. Uh, the build pillar is more along the lines of applica- you know, supporting developing of modern applications, developing and deploying modern applications. So many of the technologies that have come from our acquisitions of Pivotal as well as Bitnami uh, make up uh, that, um, uh, that pillar. And these are technologies that are coming to fore uh, and you'll hear more and more about at this VM world and, and going forward. Um, our uh, run pillar is really where you'll find Tanzu Kubernetes Grid. Now, this is our uh, distribution, but it's more than just a distribution of Kubernetes. It's a distribution of Kubernetes along with all the tools that you would need to be able to deploy modern applications. So all of these three pillars come together along with services provided by Pivotal Labs uh, to um, really give you a, a full uh, uh, multifaceted platform for deploying and operating modern applications. Great. And Efri, uh, you know, where are there integrations there? Uh, you know, how, how does the storage uh, you know, fit in has been a discussion we've been having for a few years uh, when it com comes to Kubernetes. Yeah, basically PowerProtect integrates with all of these levels that Tom uh, has mentioned, starting with the lower, lowest levels of uh, integration with the storage. VMware has cloud, cloud native storage solutions, which allow things like incremental snapshots to be uh, taken from the environment. And uh, we are uh, using this uh, mechanism in order to copy data efficiently from um, TKG, uh, Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, uh, environment out of the cluster into uh, space efficient data domain as a, as a target site. So that's a storage integration. Then there is qualification and support for the various run environments that Tom has mentioned, the Tanzu Kubernetes Grid and Tanzu Kubernetes Grid uh, integrated, uh, as well as things that we're working with VMware in order to enable protection for what is, has been called uh, project specific which really allows you a very sophisticated capabilities of running multiple Kubernetes clusters using the Kubernetes cluster API uh, capabilities. So you can spin up cluster very, very quickly by VMware, and then we can take backups uh, of this environment up to a data domain uh, target side. And finally, uh, working with Tom for a uh, sensitive uh, amount of time and, and effort to do the integration between Tanzu Mission Control and power protect. So allowing cloud, multi-cloud, multi-location environments to be provisioned and monitoring by Tanzu Mission Control, but also protected using our yeah, so, so Tom, we, we talked about uh, supporting the ecosystem and it's a much faster cadence now than it was in the past. It used to be, it felt like every other year at VMworld, we got together and talked about the major vSphere release. Of course, mm -hmm. in the container and Kubernetes uh, world, we're having a much uh, faster cadence. So uh, could you just uh, help us understand, you know, what of this is generally available today? We saw vSphere 7 uh, back in the spring, uh, the, the, the update right ahead of VMworld, uh, that uh, really extended Kubernetes uh, beyond just VCF to uh, be able to be in all vSphere 7 environments. So we, we know uh, some of this is, you know, here on the roadmap. So help map us out for us, you know, kind of what's here today from VMware and, you know, what, what the timeline is we expect for all of these pieces we've been discussing. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so Mission Control uh, shipped in March. Uh, so, uh, so we're still, you know, relatively new. But as as you say, uh, we run uh, cloud native ourselves, and so we're releasing new uh, features and new capabilities literally every week. We have a, a weekly um, uh, cadence for release. Uh, our data protection capability was just introduced at the end of June, so it's uh, fairly new, um, and uh, we are still introducing um, capabilities like you know, bring your own storage. Uh, 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 doing scheduling uh, backups and this kind of thing. Um, you'll see us adding uh, more and more cloud providers. Um, we have been working to open up the platform to make it uh, uh, available to uh, partners to integrate with. 
Uh, and this is you know just generally with mission control across the board, but specifically uh, when it comes to Dell and PowerProtect, the data protection capability, um, this is something that we are still actively working on. And uh, it is uh, uh, you know past the architecture stage, but uh, it's probably uh, still a, a little ways out uh, before we can deliver on it. But we're uh, we are uh, working on it uh, diligently and and definitely uh, expect to have that uh, in the product and available and really providing a basis for integrations with uh, uh, with other providers as well. Yeah, and in terms of uh, PowerProtect, um, we have told uh, the audience about uh, Tech Preview a year ago, and since then we have released a number of uh, releases. We are having a quarterly cadence, so it is available uh, for uh, the general consumption for quite some time. Um, talking about the integration layers that we have mentioned before, we are the first uh, stack to protect VMs and Kubernetes and applications using the same platform, the same UI, the same policies, everything looks the same. And um, we have recently introduced uh, capabilities such as uh, application consistency for, for a number of, of applications, uh, the support for uh, TKG, is uh, available for now. And as Tom has said, we are working on further integrations, uh, such as the integration with uh, Tanzo Mission Control with VMware. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, Want to get a final word from both of you, Efri, if we'll, we'll start with you. You know, we've got this regular cadence coming up. Uh, we know we're only a couple of weeks away from, uh, you know, DTWE, the Dell Technology World experience, where of course the Cube will be there. Um, what should we look for the rest of 2020 or you know, any final uh, comments that you have for, for customers that might be looking at this environment? Sure, I think that um, two trends that I'm seeing and they are just getting stronger over the, the years. Uh, the first thing is, is multi-cloud and, and multi-cloud means many things to different people, but basically every customer that we are speaking to is, is talking about, I want to run things on-prem, but I also need to run these workloads uh, in, in the hyperscaler and I need to move from one hyperscaler uh, region to another or between hyperscalers. And I want to run this distribution here and the other distribution there. And there are many, many um, combinations of stacks and databases as a service and, and other uh, uh, components of the infrastructure that different developers are using on-prem and in the cloud. So I, I expect this to, to go even further and, and solutions like PowerProtect and TKG can help customers to, to do that job. Uh, and of course, tons of mission control to monitor and manage this environment. Secondly, I think that protection is going to follow more the workloads. So application is no longer the VM, obviously it's becoming many different components that are start, starting to span across locations and across environments. And again, the protection nature of these are, is going to change according to where and how these workloads are being provisioned. Yeah, and I would say the same thing about mission control, you know, very much multi-cloud focus. Uh, you know, today it's largely an AWS focused uh, solution. We're uh, changing to add uh, more flexible storage options, uh, more clouds. Uh, Azure is something that we'll be doing uh, in the short term uh, Google Cloud Platform uh, and Google Cloud Storage uh, after that, as well as just the ability to use your own uh, on-prem storage for your backup targets. Um, also, we're going to be focusing on uh, driving more policy-driven backup. So, uh, you know, being able to define policies for groups of clusters, uh, define RTO and RPO for groups of clusters, allowing mission control to uh, help determine what the uh, individual backup policy should be for that uh, a particular asset, um, and you know, continuing to work with Dell and other partners to help uh, extend our, our platform and open it up for other um, data protection providers. Tom and Efri, thanks so much for the updates. Tom, welcome to being a CUBE alumni, and Efri, I'm, I'm sure we'll be seeing you and the team in the near future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stay with us for more coverage from VMworld 2020. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.